Well, of course, the biggest risk uh, for companies operating in Hong Kong is they're basically subject to the whims of the Chinese government, of the Chinese Communist Party, which runs that government uh, without any oversight uh, or transparency. Uh, and so uh, companies that invest in Hong Kong now or are in Hong Kong are, uh, have a, will have a tenuous relationship to the, the rule of law as we think of it in uh, democratic countries. Uh, they will be subject to the whims of these governments. They cannot be secure in the contracts they make. Their intellectual property will be at risk. All of the all of the risks that companies take to do business in mainland China now, they now have in Hong Kong. What's your advice then to U.S. businesses in Hong Kong? Should they should they leave? Should they consider making such a drastic move? Well, it's a, it's a great question, and I think companies are going to have to be very realistic about their host government about what the government is going to be willing to do to them if their if the company's interest crosses the interests of the government here in the united states in australia if you, a company has certain rights it can rely on the execution of the law as written in a democratic process in china that's just not true it's much more subjective you're subject to the whims of officials who are desperate to stay in power because they have no legitimacy from the people uh, so it's it's a much tougher question for business i'm not saying businesses shouldn't operate there there's still a lot of business that happens with mainland china and with hong kong but the you cannot rely on the rule of law in those situations and, and businesses should be very aware of that. And I think that's, my guess is that's what, exactly what the Biden administration is going to say. Yeah. Has Washington done enough in your view to, to highlight and to, and to really ramp up pressure over Beijing's crackdown on the, fi on the financial center? I think they're moving in the right direction. Uh, and I think there's a lot of support in both parties for the approach that the Biden administration is taking to Hong Kong and to China overall. Uh, we don't want to completely decouple. In the United States, we, we talk about decoupling the two economies. That would be very bad for the United States. It'd be bad for the people of China. Uh, it'd be very, very bad for the world economy. We can't completely separate the two economies, I believe. But we should be making very strategic decisions about those sectors of the economy where we'd be a little more concerned about the impact on national security, whether it's high tech, uh, certain uh, medical uh, supply chains. Uh, and then, of course, we need to be thinking about uh, the, the people of Hong Kong, the people of China. We should be doing things to bolster their uh, their human rights, their democratic credentials. So I think being clear eyed and then speaking openly about the challenges that companies are going to have in Hong Kong and also in mainland China is very important. And, and I'm glad the administration is, do, is about to do it. China's foreign ministry has responded. It claims that the U.S. is uh, quote, a sinister intention of playing the Hong Kong card to curb China's development is clear. Look, this is quite a, a predictable response from Beijing, isn't it? Yeah, it's some pretty good hyperbole propaganda. I like the use of the word sinister just in general. Uh, I don't believe a word of it, but it's a it's um, kind of a creative approach and they're, they're pushing back. They don't have a lot of ground to stand on. Uh, you just look at what's happening on the ground in Hong Kong. People who uh, Hong Kongers are fleeing in droves. A lot of them are, are going to the UK, which is offering pretty much an open admissions policy to people from Hong Kong. Uh, the economy is no doubt severe impacted. Beijing doesn't seem to care about that. Uh, they're much more interested in total control. Uh, none of this is a surprise. It's, a, it's very disconcerting, of course, that uh, Beijing did not follow its agreement to allow 50 years of separate systems with Hong Kong. Uh, they cracked down uh, about 20 years early. It's, it's very unfortunate for Hong Kong. It's, I think we're seeing the demise of a great city. Yeah, you just uh, spoke about uh, Hong Kongers moving to the UK. Um, are there any similar moves afoot in the United States? Are there any visas that are being granted to, to Hong Kongers to make such a move, you know, quite easy? I don't believe there are, but there should be. Uh, I think the UK is doing the right thing. Uh, they are, that's, that's a great advertisement for freedom and democracy and uh, respect for human rights and the rule of law. I think the United States should follow suit. We're a little neuralgic in the United States right now about immigration issues. Uh, I thought the Biden administration would be a little more open-minded. Maybe they will be soon. I think they should be. I think the US embracing exactly what the UK has done would be a good thing. We've got we've got plenty of room here, and we we love it when smart people come in and make a contribution to our economy.
Okay, the Biden administration has also this week warned businesses about the growing risks of having, of having supply chain and investment links to China's uh, Xinjiang region. This is due to forced labour and human rights abuses there. Right, and this is this is a big concern in Congress. Congress has passed uh, here in Washington has passed several pieces of legislation targeting uh, the activities of the Chinese government in Xinjiang province, where uh, millions of Uyghur Chinese people have been imprisoned uh, and had their human rights curtailed. Uh, the the actions of the Chinese government there are quite outrageous. Uh, Congress, the Trump administration originally pivoted towards uh, kind of a tough crackdown over Xinjiang region. Uh, it was a little helter skelter, not terrific policy making, even though the intent was very good. The Biden administration is looking to kind of clean that up, systematize it, make it a little more regular uh, and more defensible in court. And, I, and so I think Congress is going to embrace that. This is actually something both Republicans and Democrats agree on here in Washington. You don't hear much about things like that anymore. Uh, in a way, bipartisanship is very good and it's, it's happening more than people think. Uh, and Xinjiang province and what's happening to the Uyghurs is something where both parties agree here in Washington. Yeah, a US official told the Financial Times that the point of this advisory is to stress that if you do not exit these supply chains, uh, you run a risk of violating uh, US laws. Uh, uh, enough businesses or is the business community at large um, aware enough of the, you know, the economic, the legal, the reputational risks of involving themselves with, with entities involved in human rights abuses like that have been very well documented in uh, Xinjiang? Yeah, Jackson, I think uh, at least uh, in my conversations with the American business community, they're very aware of what the policy debate is about China. They've been hyper aware of it for decades. Uh, many years ago, it was the U.S. business community that was pushing for openness with China. They were very successful in that. Starting a few years ago, they became very concerned about the actions of the Chinese government as relates to their business in China, whether it was the rule of law, intellectual property rights, just generally uh, kind of random uh, business enforcement mechanisms from the government. Uh, and they started to become more skeptical of the opening to China themselves. Uh, maybe not on necessarily on human rights issues, but just on business practices. So they're very aware of what's going on. Frankly, if 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 they're not aware, it's because they they haven't picked up the newspaper or looked at the news on their phone. Uh, this is this is something that is very much uh, in the minds, I think, of at least American businesses. I'm sure in Australia as well are tracking uh, how other governments are thinking about China and its actions and the fact that it's really there's really been no relief from this uh, crackdown on. Uh, democracy, democratic norms, the rule of law, that kind of thing. Okay, Lester Munson from the National Security Institute.